I'm very well. Very well, thank you. Is this just any other game? Uh, no, no, it's not. I think the Six Nations is such a big tournament. Uh, obviously, losing to Scotland after the first half performance, fighting back in the second half. You know, we we had fair opportunities to win that game. Obviously, momentum is a big part of it, and win the first game obviously sets you up nicely. You know, we got a game, um, a tough a tough place to go, Twickenham. England going through a similar. Um, sort of spell as we are at the moment, probably not as um, as drastic swing of players in and out, but you know it's a, it's a great opportunity. We saw at the end of uh, the second half of last week's performance that we've got it in us. We just got to make sure we deliver that from from minute one. What was it like watching last week? Well, the first half, no comment. <laughs> um, second half, obviously a lot better. Um, I, I find it hard watching better times. Uh, obviously, I. You, you you work so hard to to put yourself in position to have the jersey, uh, was fit, but obviously the boss man said to give an extra week, so there's not many people in the world that can change Gats's mind when it comes to it. So, um, you know, I have to respect that decision. Did I agree with it? No, because obviously I won't be playing. But um, you know, the boss knows best, and um, I did my best to prepare the team for last week, and obviously we got a uh, big challenge this week. You know what it takes to win this weekend. Not more. In this squad, do because of their age, what does it take, and what messages have you been giving to the other players about what you like on Saturday? Um, not many, to be honest. I think there's been enough, uh, enough said within the squad, there's been enough messages from coaches to the players, um, that we weren't good enough for the first 40 minutes, um, last week, and we, we have to, we can't ever be there again. Do you know what I mean? And enough of the these boys have played enough senior rugby now that they know the enormity of uh, of the challenge. But it's one that they're all up, they're up for and ready for. You know, it's um, it's well reported. It's a young squad. We we are, you know, I guess that naivety and that bliss is 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 great because you don't know what to expect and you can put your own stamp on it. And for for this squad now, we've got a great opportunity for this group to put their stamp on it to for you know for the jersey, but going forward as well. Mike Phillips told me once about how much he loved going to Twickenham for various reasons. Do you think it stirs something a bit different in, in the Welsh rugby players? Yeah, Mike liked it for the London life after us, I prom. <laughs> um, to be honest, it, it always does. Do you mean like, gone on the day, well, like England Wales is still a big, competi a big competition, big game for everyone. There's enough history behind it, but the Six Nations as a whole is getting. It's getting massive, you know. Of late, obviously, the form of Ireland, form of France, the the teams to beat, and, and place, tough places to go. Um, I think the challenge for us is is simple. You know, we've got to go out there uh, on Saturday as a minimum start as we finished against Scotland, um, and hopefully we can push on to another gear. Kenneth, um, you, you spoke about uh, well, Matt, Matt touched upon the, the only one that's won there, in 2012. Grand Slam year 2015. Uh, given that we were talking about the first 40, has that been the Achilles heel at Twickenham in recent years? The fact perhaps you maybe are playing catch up by half time? Uh, probably not. I, I, I'll have to look back. Uh, it's been a fair few years of those games, obviously, but I don't think it's been a, a massive issue for us. I think what, what we have got is a big swing of players. It's well, well documented, but we've got an exciting group now. Um, thinking, thinking back to the game against Scotland, I think honestly we probably got caught in the emotion of it. Do you know what I mean like a lot of boys, you know, a couple of boys first caps, a lot of boys back in the fold after a while, playing at home in front of a packed out stadium. You know that um, that's a lesson that these boys uh, and these guys have got to learn very quickly. That you know you're there for a reason to do a job. Um, yes, you're passionate. Yes, you have a huge pride in what you do, but. We are in the results business, pure, <laughs> pure and simple, you know. And um, I think that was a real eye opener, and um, I guess the first proper experience of having to deliver with all the stuff going on, as well. Just fiftieth um, championship appearance, another accolade. Thirteen years of first one, I think, was twenty eleven. What drives you, you on, given that you're uh, one of the elder members of the side, and, and some have us now retired? Um, it's the full circle of life, I've guessed, isn't it? I think I was the youngest for a fair few years and luckily not the oldest still. Gar, 
Gar Davis is keeping me in second spot, which I'm happy about. Um, what drives me, it's never changed my, my drive. It's always the three feathers, you know, the, um, the honour, the, the, pri- the privilege, you know, the, the respect I have for the jersey is something that keeps me focused every day, keeps me working every day. Uh, I'm sure a fair few people say I should have finished a few years ago. But that fight in me and that desire to do best by the jersey and do best by Wales has always kept me um, focused on, you know, on me and doing me, I guess, and staying in my lane and doing the best of my ability. Uh, and that still drives me um, every day and still will. Well, if you picked out your best Six Nations experience, what would it be in the 49 to date? And a win at Twickenham could that rival? Uh, I think for me as a whole um, I couldn't pick out one I would say 2012 as obviously new into the environment new into the the camp I think that was an experience that uh, I'll never forget uh, purely because the the ride of post World Cup and then back up for another competition Uh, the camps beforehand in Poland and you know, have that group of guys that sort of carried on from the 11 World Cup with the young guys sort of pushing through and putting big heat on the players, the senior players. For me, that um, those memories are some incredible, you know, just being part of it, knowing I, all I had to do was do my job as best of my ability and everyone else would do theirs. And, you know, the, the condition the boys were in was incredible. Um, whether it will rival it, it will certainly cheer a lot of the people up for sure. Yeah. And it will... It'll be a great, uh, a great step going into the Fowler week um, to refocus again. Um, but like I said, the challenge is huge. We know that. The boys have prepped incredibly well this week. Dav has led from the front. I think he's spoken incredibly well. Um, and like I said, you know, we've got to start as a minimum where we finish in Scotland to really push on now. You put Shane Williams behind you. Can you catch a Driscoll? Three to go. <laughs> uh, I'll let you know. I'll get back to you on that one. Yeah. How much of an honour would that be? Oh, it's huge. I, I, for me, it's like anyone. The cliche is you don't really think about it when you're in it. And having obviously a bit more time than usual last week, obviously people are these these come up and it's massive. These are players that I grew up um, my heroes and honouring, and I wanted to be like them and to be speaker uh, spoken of in the same sentence and the same uh, records is is huge. And you know, hopefully, there's there's a lot. There's enough fight in me to get that, and uh, it's an exciting opportunity this campaign. And with these, uh, with this new group of boys, I'm I'm excited to go shoulder to shoulder with them to see what we can achieve. Thank you. You spoke about how good Ireland and France are at the moment. Is there still a little extra crackle around the match against England? Does it still resonate a bit more with the players and the public? Um, uh, Wales England. There's probably one of the b- biggest rivalries, I guess, um, for us. There's not much more we can do then on the on Saturday. Um, I think, ideally, if we would have been beaten England, uh, sorry, beaten Scotland in the first round, there'd have been a bit more heat around it. But for us now, our focus is purely we've got to go and get the result. Um, obviously, performance is a massive part of that for us, especially where the squad is now the developing of it. We've got to get a performance and the result. And look, I think myself and all the boys are excited just to get stuck in now on Saturday. George, you talk about being an elder statesman, but you're not actually... Second that old. eldest statesman. Second eldest statesman, but you're not that old. Warren's talking about you making the, the next World Cup. How long do you see yourself if you're looking at Crystal Um The honest answer is, um, I don't know. I think uh, the way my body is now, the way the season's been, been long with the World Cup, I think my focus is purely to get to the Six Nations and sit down again and review. Um, I think if you look... Uh, with a big four-year cycle, it's a lot of rugby to be played. It's a lot of rugby. Another another World Cup camp is an is an interesting debate, and that'll be a few co- uh, coffees, I imagine, with Gats. Um, but obviously, to get to that point, I've got to go for another for another four years, and whether uh, obviously I can't I can't promise that my body will be still be in, a, be in a position to fight and compete. But like I said, I'm doing everything I can day to day, week to week, Saturday to Saturday, to be the best I can be to perform. George, you talked about when you were a young player that the young players coming into this team now, are they as you were 14 years ago? Or have you noticed a difference about the nature of the young players um, compared to the way you were? 
the biggest thing is they communicate via Snapchat. So, like, in terms of communicating, it's a difficult beast now. Um, the, uh, I don't want to sound old and say I, I don't remember those days, but they're very similar. The only difference is probably when I came through and that group of young players, we had a few more senior players for a bit longer to help guide and to mould and to form and to show uh, the guys. But I've been massively impressed with the young boys coming through and their application, especially to the unknown for a lot of them and the intensity and the the fact that it is constant, you know, that, that intensity, repeatability, you got to go and go and go and that, the, how they're adapting to that has been really good. Jat is up to his normal, which is, uh, which is great for me because at least everyone's getting the same punishment. Um, but these guys, like I said, they've got a great opportunity now to stamp their authority on the jersey. They've got a great opportunity to stamp how they want this cycle to look going into the next World Cup. And one exciting opportunity that is for me to be part of that, to help them on that journey. And whether I get there or not to another World Cup, is, uh, we'll, we'll have that conversation again. Look at it both ways, couldn't you? It'd be good or bad, I don't know. Um, yeah, look, I, I think... Um, yeah, my for Becky and my family, we're super excited for for that for next year. Um, obviously, tough to to leave what we know behind, but um, for us to be out, um, you know, out in Exxon Provence playing for a wicked club that are doing some amazing stuff in Prodo and fighting for that top fourteen, um, I think it's a, a wicked challenge for me. Uh, firstly, to learn a bit of French, which is going average, <laughs> um, but. To, to try a new style of rugby, to, again, to help Provence on their journey up to top 14 and be part of that is something that excites me as well. Okay.